This is going to be my Wheel of Time Season 2, Episode 2, spoiler-filled review. This is the place to get my spoiler-filled thoughts on the episode, what I liked, what I didn't, and then some overall opinions and a final rating for the episode. So let's dive into Episode 2 of the Wheel of Time Season 2. Let's go ahead and kick things off with a recap of the episode. So the episode opens with Rand, who is largely absent from episode one. He's staying with an innkeeper in the Foregate in Kyrian, and the innkeeper's name is Celine. He's been working a job in the city at a sanitarium, specifically taking care of one of the older patients there, a veteran of the Aiel War who was once a blade master, but has PTSD from the war. While helping the man, one of Rand's co-workers decides to be a prick and scares the old man, causing him to freak out. We find out that that co-worker gets to work with some of the higher profile inmates in the asylum. Later in the episode, in the foregate, Rand jumps the, uh, the co-worker from the sanatorium, beats him within an inch of his life, and almost uses the one power to end him. Distraught at what he did, Rand goes back to the arms of Selene at the inn. The next day, however, Rand is promoted to take the other man's job, as he's unable to work because Rand beat the shit out of him. And we now find out that Rand gets to work and take care of Loghain, the gentled false dragon who is an inmate at the asylum. This is been Rand's plan all along. Now Moraine and Lan have been healed of their wounds from their fight with the Fades in the previous episode, and Adelius and Varen agree to go with Moraine and Lan to the White Tower. Varen correctly deduces that Moraine wants to dump off Lan onto someone at the tower so that she could go on alone. That's why Varen volunteers to come. Later on the road, Varen reveals to Moraine that she knows about the Dragon Reborn and that Moraine is on a quest to protect and find the dragon. Moraine is forced to trust Varen and joins them by the fire where Moraine is asked by Adelius how her and Lan met. She ends up telling a story of how they met years ago and how Lan threw her into a pond, basically the events of New Spring. Later in that same evening, Lan and Moraine have a conversation where Moraine shares that Rand is still alive. They didn't kill the Dark One. Rather, they released a Shamael and possibly the other Forsaken and that they're already losing the last battle, which obviously freaks Lan the F out. And then she needs to go on without him is what she says. Well, he says he won't leave her, but then Alana arrives with her warders and Moraine tells him that he will will go with Alana or the bond will be passed to her and then she rides off. In the White Tower, Nynaeve goes with Leandrin to watch the healing of a girl with breakbone fever. In Accepted does the healing, Nynaeve watches. Leandrin then uses that as a springboard to have a conversation with Nynaeve about the other Ajas and what they do. And then she makes a strong pitch for the Red Aja as the Aja that stops the world from even needing healing. Leandrin then takes some treats that she buys over to Matt in, in the dungeon she's keeping him in. But after she leaves, Matt pulls down a desk that it's been on his wall and he reveals that he has been trying to dig his way out of his cell through an adjacent wall. Later on, Matt finally gets through that wall to discover that it's another cell, but it's occupied by Min, who we met last season. They end up taking the wall down together and then Min comes over for a chat and she sees a vision of Matt stabbing Rand with the Shadar Logoth dagger, setting up a potential mystery for the future. Also at this time, Shiriam meets with Alana in her warders to discuss Nynaeve being ready for her accepted test through the arches. Alana argues that she She's not ready, but Shiryam says that Leandrin's faction has been pushing it through the Hall of the Tower, and that Alana must speak there if she wants to make it known, but notices that Alana is set to leave the Tower as she is going to go meet Moraine. Later on, Nynaeve shows up to meet Leandrin, but just misses her. She ends up following her through the city, eventually seeing Leandrin show up in the harbor with an old man in a bed who she tries to comfort with a painkiller. She notices Nynaeve and lashes out at her to leave. Nynaeve informs her that the herb she was using would not help with the man's pain, and Leandrin slaps Nynaeve and Nynaeve leaves and then Leandrin says my beautiful boy my poor boy revealing that the old man is Leandrin's son. Egwene gets a new neighbor in the novice quarters and that is none other than Elaine Tricand daughter heir of Andor in case you forgot her titles. Elaine has servants moving lots of decorations and cushions into her room. After a funny conversation they end up somewhat becoming friends. Egwene shows her around the tower but finds out that Elaine has been there multiple times before. On their way back to their rooms they come across Shiriam who had discovered all the things that Elaine had moved into a room. She's had them removed and demands to know who allowed Elaine's servants in the novice quarters. Rather than give up the name, Elaine takes the punishment herself, showing Egwene that Elaine is not above doing an honorable thing. Later that night, Elaine demonstrates her home brewing capabilities as she shares a beer with Egwene in their rooms. During this time, they discuss many, many things, but most importantly, Egwene's jealousy of Nynaeve for her strength and how hard she has to work compared to Nynaeve, who doesn't really work at all. Unknown to them, Nynaeve is outside the door and overhears. As Nynaeve 
Maeve goes back to her own rooms to contemplate Leandra Knox and takes her down to the depths of the tower where Shiriam and Liana are waiting and they set to do her accepted test through the arches. The last plot line in the episode is the Shinarans and Perrin. Now, early on in the episode, Elias leads them to an empty village. The village appears like people left in a hurry and Perrin has more visions inside one of the homes, believing that he's seeing people in real time when they were really just visions of the past. He blames Elias for these visions, but he's told it doesn't work that way. They are interrupted by Masima, who brings them to a fade that has been nailed to a door. As they all wonder who could have done this to a fade, Lord Ingtar tells them that they will stay in a fishing village that they saw near the river. They arrive at the fishing village called Atuan's Mill, and they take rooms at the inn. That night, while they are sleeping, the Shanchan attack the village, and while the Shinarans are initially successful at fighting them off, the Damani or the leashed Sanchan channelers arrive and they create a windstorm that knocks out the remaining defenders. The next morning, they are greeted by the High Lady Suroth riding a ridiculous palanquin with her voice and Ishamael riding shotgun. So let's jump into the review and we will start with what I loved from the episode. First of all, one of my main attractions for seeing a Wheel of Time TV series, and this is personal, is just seeing the various locations from the books visualized. Seeing Kyrian was super cool in the same way that seeing Tarvalin was very cool in season one. We got to see the topless towers of Kyrian and some of them still being rebuilt as well. I thought that was great. The interior of the city looked really cool. There was a disparity between the city proper and the foregate. I thought that was done really, really well. Of course, the way people were dressing and all of that. I thought that the dynamic between Rand and Selene was really good, but I need to see more there before I'm willing to say I love it. But Selene is definitely a temptress for Rand and she has her own agenda and she's saying some incredibly cryptic things that I think book readers will catch. Rand and Errol was a pleasure to watch. That's the old guy. Seeing the sword forms make an appearance was really cool, but I don't see Rand learning the sword from him as they seem to imply. We'll talk about that in a minute. The events in the tower, I, I just think were great. Kate Fleetwood as Leandrin continues to impress me, and I'm genuinely intrigued to see where that plot line's gonna go. She is so much more full as a character than she was in the books, and the fact that I have to empathize with her a little bit makes her very compelling to me. Kira Coveney is literally just great as Elaine. I cannot think of any way in which they could have made her performance better. She literally epitomizes Elaine in her motions, her voice, how she carries herself, and even in her smile. And while I admit I was a little worried when I saw all of the servants there at first, I thought the scene with Shiriam really showed a lot of who Elaine is and a little bit of her character. So I thought that scene was a great addition just to demonstrate that. The fact that we got multiple mentions that she's the daughter heir of Andor was also right on point because Elaine has a habit of letting every single person in the world know that she is the daughter heir of Andor. Zoe Robbins continues to be outstanding as Nynaeve. She's been given a ton of time to shine as a character and I think that really shows. Not to mention Madeline Madden has also been great as Egwene. I thought the healing scene was really cool because of the color of the weaves. They're using the right types. If you were paying attention to the colors, they were the right colors that were for healing. I just thought that was great. I love that attention to detail. The Min and Matt reaction was surprisingly cool. I wasn't sure what I would think about that at first, but Matt started to feel a little bit more like Matt to me, which I thought was great. Also, I said this in the last review, the tower just still feels larger to me. And I think the more and more of it that we get to see, the more and more the tower and the grounds feel larger, the world feels bigger. So I think that's great. Lastly, I loved the fight choreography at the end of the episode. The battle was great and the Shinar and specifically looked badass and like they were really, really fighting. Masima was outstanding and I seeing loyal throw people around was also really, really cool. The way in which the Damani I think were utilized as well was great. For the episode in general, I thought this episode was better paced than the first episode and the introduction of new characters and locations and I guess the expansion of the world made it a highlight to me. So what didn't I like though? Well, there are a couple things that I'm just not sold on yet. I mentioned earlier, I did like the dynamic between Rand and Selene, but I'm not sure yet that I buy the circumstances, specifically because I know who Selene is. I think the choice of her being an innkeeper was a poor choice, or at least so far it has been. I guess it gives them a reason to stay together, but it just seems too specific and too grounded in a, a role for Selene to have. What I mean by grounded is she has to be in that place. She can't just disappear like she does in the books. I'm not saying that it's a bad choice. It just doesn't sit with me well yet, so I'm not sure about it. I think that we're getting Crazy Ran from the Dragon Reborn right now, too. He's on a mission. It somewhat explains why he would beat the shit out of that guy, who's clearly deserved it, by the way. And I liked him for 
freaking out that he almost used the one power to end that guy and that that was scary and it rocked Rand to his core. But that being said, I it still feels really, really early to have this version of Rand. I'm not sure that we've properly established that he can be endearing. And I think that's really, really important for his overall character arc that he starts off as this sort of humble, endearing boy who's stubborn. The stuff with Errol was great for making Rand feel likable, but it was a fast turnaround to see him jumping a guy in an alley. Speaking of Errol, I hope they aren't using him as the way that Rand learns how to fight with the sword. I don't see Rand having sparring matches with an old man without a sword who gets scared when he hears loud sounds in the middle of a sanatorium. I don't think that would be super plausible for Rand to become a blade master that way, so I certainly hope that's not what they're implying has happened. But let's talk about the episode overall. I thought this was an improvement over the previous episode, and the last one was pretty good. The pacing was slightly better, and there was some more action for sure. The introduction of Elaine was almost perfect to me, and Leandrin continues to be a highlight of the show. I'd like some more out of the Perrin storyline, and obviously also Matt. Both of them have felt underdeveloped to me through both seasons, actually. I'd love to see them both get some more serious screen time as well as having some important things to do and come into their own as characters. That being said, this was a very good episode, and although it wasn't the most emotionally impactful episode I've ever seen, it was action-packed, interesting, and it kept the story moving. I do think it was better than the last one. I'm going to give episode two a solid 7.5 out of 10. What did you think of episode two? Let me know in the comments of the video and stay tuned for my episode three review, which should release tomorrow. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any more Wheel of Time TV or book content on the channel. And make sure to also hit the bell icon so you get those notifications. Huge shout out to all of my patrons. You guys are all awesome. You make this channel happen. If you want to become a patron and support the channel, just click the link for Patreon in the description of the video. Lastly, if you liked this video, you might like one of these ones here as well. Thank you for watching. And until next time, peace out.